everyone welcome back to my channel and i'm back here with a long summer break with another very interesting feature which is still in preview so if you are exploring azure ai or just curious about how microsoft is building the future of intelligent agents then you are in the right place so today we are going to dive into a hidden gem which is inside azure ai foundry and that is called foundry agent so foundry agent is the one which is still in preview and we will see going forward what is it what it can do we will take some example use cases and we'll wind up with some tips and tricks around that and the best practices so let's quickly get started with that so in order to get started you need to log into azure portal and then you can go ahead and create or instant create an instance of azure ai foundry so for me, it is, uh, it is appearing over here, but if you want, you can search it here and it will show you. So here you can see this icon. So click on this one and go ahead and create a new resource. So click on create a resource. Here you need to select the subscription. You need to select the resource group, whatever the resource group you want, or even you can go ahead and create the new resource group. Then you need to provide the unique name here. Here you need to select the region which is very closest to you and the name of the project which you are going to create in your Azure AI Foundry. So once you are done with all these details, just click on next and it will go ahead and create an instance of Azure AI Foundry for us. So I'm not going to repeat that because it is a little bit time consuming and I have already done it. So let me open up the one which I have already created. So I will go with this one. So this is the instance which I have created and here you can see it is saying go to Azure AI Foundry portal. Click on this one and it will open up a new window which looks something like this. Okay, now we are at the place where we can play with our models where you can see <coughs> excuse me, various options on the left hand side. This is the model catalog where you will see lot many models which are hosted on Azure and are uh, open for you to use. You can even filter the models based on your choices, like what type of models are you looking for? What are the capabilities are you looking for? Then you do have some inference stuff. Let's say you are working mainly with the audio generation, then you can select the audio generation and it will list down all those models which are related to this particular inference task. Then we do have, I'll let it load. then we do have a fine tuning task so if you are towards the fine tuning you can go ahead and try these options over here and apart from this there is an option to compare the model so if you are not sure which one is good or what are the features which are good in one but not that great in other then you can go ahead and compare the models it will also talk about the cost and the number of token factor as well Apart from that, these are the new announcements which you can see. But apart from this, what I am planning to show you here is this little icon. Here you can see the blue icon. So this little icon is on the top right. And that's your new best friend. So let's click on this one. And here you can see something new has opened over here, which is still in preview and it is calling it as Foundry Agent. So let's keep in mind that Foundry Agent is not a tool to deploy rather it will make your deployment much easier and smarter so if i reiterate this thing foundry agent is not a tool you deploy it is a tool that helps you deploy smarter in a very easy fashion so this is the thing which you need to keep in mind it's not an agent which you can go ahead and utilize in your application but it has its own purpose which we will see in a while but at the end of the day, I bet you will be convinced that why this particular extension or I would say the uh, new feature which is Foundry Agent is worth your attention. So let me quickly show you one thing. <clears throat> and before I move ahead, let's make one thing clear that this particular agent is still an experimental agent which is built right inside our Azure AI Foundry portal. So if you're planning to access it outside the portal, it's not going to work because this is meant only for the Azure AI Foundry because there are a lot many things, lot many options we have which we can perform, lot many operations we can perform. 
So this is the agent which is going to help us to decide what to do when, which is the best option for us to use, which is the best tool we should use, how we can go ahead and perform a certain things. So you can also think it as a co-pilot, which is specifically trained to help you with your foundry models and its agent related tools, which are sitting inside the foundry. So now I'm going to show you a few questions so that you will get an idea of what all things we can do using this. So my first question to this foundry agent would be how do I connect an OpenAI tool? So let's see. So this is a question I'm looking for help and here you can see it has started searching. And it is suggesting that how you can connect an OpenAI tool. So set up your foundry agent and set up a server, do all these configuration settings, and then you are good to go. So this is one question which you can ask. Similarly, you can also ask another theoretical question, which is like, what is the difference between connected and the standalone agents? So I'm sure it will come up with some sort of answer which would convince you. So Let's look at it. So it is saying that for connected agents, these are the four properties which we are looking for. For whereas when you are talking about the standalone agents, these are the four, uh, three points which you can consider. So in summary, connected agents are more suited for complex collaborative environments, while standalone agents are effective for simpler, which is completely true. So. What I'm trying to say here is if you have any theoretical question you, related to this foundry or the models, you can just shoot it out. Or if you have something very specific, like which model should I use for medical? Let me try that. Best model for medical diagnosis. So, because I don't know which model should I use and if you are looking at the foundry, there are more than 10,000 models which are listed on the foundry. So, let's take a help of this foundry agent to figure it out what we should use. And here you can see it listed these four models. So, you can choose depending on your requirement, what kind of diagnosis you are planning to do. And these things, uh, these are the models which can help you with very good result. So this is the one. Apart from that, uh, if you will think of a scenario like uh, how do I connect with the REST API tool? Let me try that. How do I connect with a REST API tool? There is typo, but I think we are still good to go. And see here, if you will detail out your prompt or the query, definitely it will give you much better results. But uh, what I'm trying to say you is, let's say if I'm giving this a high level statement, how do I connect with the REST API, then it will just provide you with all the instructions which are required to set up a REST API using Azure AI Foundry. So you need to set up an agent, you need to set up a connection details, you add the required header so that you can make a call to the API, and then you need to execute. So if you want further information, it is also providing you with the document here, the documentation. So click on that and it will give you the clear documentation or point you to the correct page from where it is fetching the information. So this is another very great feature you can look at. And the most important thing here is whenever you're seeking for help, you need not to leave the portal or you need not to google around the things rather you can just ask your queries here and you will get the response here itself even if you want to know how how do i trigger an agent via logic app it should come up with something so let's try one last question trigger an agent via And it's not only about theoretical, you can even ask it, how can I create my agent or how can I build an application with a multi-agent scenarios. So it will also point you to the direction and it will also give you the step-by-step -step instructions. So you can start with the foundational application and then come up with the full flesh enterprise application. It completely depends on the way how you are asking the questions here. 
So these are the high level steps it is saying create a logic app, assign permissions, add a trigger, then add actions to workflow, save and test it. So these are all things you need to do. And still if you are not sure, make sure to read this particular documentation which is linked over here. And it is saying trigger an agent using logic app. So again seems it's a very a new feature and still in preview. So I hope you got an idea of what kind of uh, questions we can ask over here. Next thing I want to show you is let me change the slide okay so now we want to know how it fits in our azure a foundry the agent which i'm talking about so on the right hand side you can see the diagram so this is the very general diagram and if you don't know what actually the agents are so agents are the one which can reason which can plan which can act using the llm models like gpt4 or anything or even it can integrate with the tools like uh, azure functions and you can integrate memory to it so that you can retain the context whenever you are chatting with your agent next time. So here, here is the diagram dep depicting how a typical agent looks like. So every agent you are building in Foundry is made up of four key components. The first one here is, here is the model, which you can think as a brain of your agent. It could be like GPT-4 role, GPT-4 turbo. It could be any model which you are planning to use. And any basically it's any supported LLM model which supports the, uh, any LLM model which supports agents. And then comes the instruction. So instruction is the place where we define what the agent should do, how it should behave, what are the goals we want to achieve using this agent. So all these are part of the instructions part. Then we have tools. So tools are uh, external capabilities that agent can invoke. It could be your REST APIs, it could be your Azure functions, it could be your any line of code which you have written somewhere. It could be even any other agent. So if you want a multi-agent kind of scenarios, then you can inject the other agent as a tool into this particular agent. And finally, we have memory, which allows our agent to retain the context across the steps, across the sessions, or even uh, across uh, the entire, what you say, workflows. So these are like the high level capabilities any agent should have. So on the left hand side, you can see all these things we would expect whenever we are talking about the agent. In simplest terms, you can think agent as a mentor, which is sitting inside the portal and ready to answer your questions about your agent composition, about your tool orchestration, about your tracing, login, even your SDK integration, how to write a code in a given language to implement your agent capabilities. So all these things you can get done using this agent and that's why I'm saying your agent is nothing but it's like a mentor who's sitting inside the portal for us to help. So if I want to recap this thing, I would say Azure AI Foundry gives you the power to build autonomous agents and the Foundry agent, which is still in preview, helps us to do it in a smarter, faster way and with definitely few headaches. So just go ahead and try this out. In next slide, I would show you what are the benefits we can get out of it. So these are the key benefits I can think of if you are using Azure AI, this Foundry agent. So the very first one is the real-time guidance when you build. So it acts like a built-in agent inside a Foundry portal and answers all the questions instantly about our uh, agent-related stuff, about our SDKs, about our theoretical concepts which we are not clear about, the model which models you choose, or even how many tokens are supported by any model. All these things you can get the guidance inside the portal itself. And in a nutshell, it will save the time by needing to go to uh, the documentation or use exploring the external forums, you will get everything in one place over here. Then we have accelerate, accelerated agent development. So the reason why it is here is because it helps us to understand how to define the tools, how to define the instructions and what all things are supported as a tool. So it supports both no code as well as code first workflow kind of thing using SDKs and the languages like Python, Dapscript, and C-sharp. So I feel that Foundry Agent is either for both beginners as well as pros as it guides you to the best practices as well as architectural design. So it's not like only a newbie should use it, but it is 
adding lot much for our experienced developers as well. Then we have tool of orchestration, which definitely this agent made very simple because it explains us or tells us how to connect with OpenAI tools, how to connect with other agent, how to connect with Azure function or any other managed instances or serverless instances. Then we have something on the governance and safety awareness side. So it offers tips. So whenever you are asking for help, it will also give you a little bit tips sometimes at the end of your answers that uh, it is recommended to do this or it is suggested that you go ahead and do this. Do you want me to tell you more about this? So all these things would be there whenever you are asking the questions. Then we have the smooth transition from, proto transition from prototype to production. Like this I mentioned, you can start with the rough scratch or the foundational application and you can gradually improve it as you only proceed with your prompts and the questions. So, and the last slide I'm having is about the tips and the benefits. So be specific, be concise on what you want to ask, what are your questions, no need to tell the entire story or the background because most of the things are already in uh, running in the context of the Azure AI Foundry. So you need not to provide the entire context. Let's say I'm looking for this model, which is from the, this provider, all these things are not at all required then usually we will go with the agents whenever we are trying out something new when we are playing in the playground with some models whenever we are building some agents in the playground then this could be the best mentor for us it can be used to leverage sdk integration like i said it supports uh, the solutions in the multiple languages so you can go ahead and ask the syntax you can ask for code snippets and it will help you out with that it can also help you to explore the multi-agent flows like how you can make uh, your agents talk whether it is with logic apps or with other agents so all these things you can perform in very well way so i hope you enjoyed watching this and i'm sure you must have realized that how this tiny icon in azure ai studio or the foundry can save our hours so see you next time in another video do let me know in comments what do you think about this thanks for watching